It's been a pleasure and privilege. I cannot express my gratitude to Professor Chakraborty that uh, how I am privileged today. In fact, uh, standing in front of you, it, make me, it makes me more humble. But uh, I have to do my job. If I remain humble, probably I would not be able to uh, the job I am supposed to. Let me reiterate that I have come here to beg from you for my armed forces, for whom I serve and uh, where I actually work to not only Indian armed forces, also to paramilitary forces. We have a total strength of close to 20 lakh forces, out of which about 13 lakh belong to Indian armed forces. And then we have got Coast Guard, we have got several police forces, several other forces. They are operating in a very, very difficult zone. And in last 10 years, I had the opportunity to look after their cause as part of the human capital development. And since I have served in university system, since I have served in the IIT system, and since I have served also in the DRDO system, I have seen where lies the difficulties, where we are actually faltering in translating our principles to be translated in a subsystem development. The subsystem development going to a system integration, the system integration going to a prototype development, the prototype development going to a limited series development, and from a limited series development to a large scale development where armed forces can actually make use of your technology. We all falter at some point of time. Therefore, I have come here primarily to seek your indulgence as well as your expertise to help the forces for whom I serve. Therefore, I have written the initiatives that I have taken for life in sciences because our life in sciences and our life sciences are very important. One of the major reasons is that the technologies are changing every day. But human skill doesn't change every day. Human difficulties do not uh, get ameliorated every day. There's always a difference between a technology development and a human development. Life scientists or technologies for life sciences, I presume, will definitely reduce that gap. And through the researches that we are aiming for, I'm sure that we will be able to reduce the gap uh, to a great extent. Well, my presentation will be having two parts, but with the philosophy. The philosophy is that we are interested in striking a balance of deliverability, interdisciplinarity, and interinstitutional compatibility, so that we can have a continuous and a seamless continuity for our technologies that we all develop in some form of isolation, in some form of team formation. But ultimate goal is that it should be able to help the armed forces as a whole in particular and human capital as a whole for the nation. So my presentation would be the first part, what we have already done. And the second part, what we are naming. Not that I will be able to give you a very exhaustive list of it. I have joined as Director General on the some uh, months back. I do not have a very pervasive look uh, on the entire subject matter. You can always guide me, you can always tell me that these are the areas. But let me also tell you that these requirements are all purpose driven. They are not passion driven research. We all do passion driven research at some point of time in university and IIT levels. But here, the majority of the researches, 99% of the researches are all purpose driven. Therefore, for us, research requires more integrity than identity. And as a result of which, every research that we pick up, which come out of a team, who can actually translate the whole concept principle into subsystem and subsystem to system integration level. So in life sciences, we have got three major activities that we do. Let me put it out in quick terms that we have a manpower intensive arm force, unlike America, who are a technology intensive arm force. So they can bank on technology, they can bank on autonomy, they can bank on uh, unmanned town system, unmanned underwater system, unmanned aerial system. But we have to work with the man intensive force. 
So the land component is a very important component. And as I said, 13 lakh soldiers plus 7 lakh paramilitary forces, we do not have any alternative but to go to institutions like IITs or some of the reputed universities who can help us with some kind of technology.